Hello everyone, my name is Nathan and today it's time for another episode of Scrap Mechanic. It is a fresh morning and I'm looking so forward to play this game today. What I would like to achieve today is build an elevator that is going to bring me up to the top of the tree. But I figured if we already take ourselves the time to build an elevator, it should be a somewhat convenient and hopefully clever elevator. Before we do that though, I want to show you the wardrobe. I just got myself a wardrobe, actually already two episodes ago, and I already made sure that I wear the proper clothes. Now those are actually not the clothes that I unlocked, but what we can do is grab one of these garment packages. And I believe we're also going to need a little bit of wool in order to make this work. And we're just going to have a look in here, put this there and make it for five wool. It's going to take 30 seconds and it's going to give us a random item of clothing. I mean, sure, the animations look a little cartoonish, but if you have a close look at the animations, they are actually brilliant. I just love the stitching machine here and everything. Also, all the craft bots, they are just hilarious. They actually kind of remind me of Claptrap. They kind of have that nature. Anyways, let's see what we got. Ooh, let's pick them up and actually check them out. So we could swap up with some silver shoes, and I think I'm gonna do that. Why the heck not? Okay, we can do more of that later if we have the time. Let me show you what I already prepared. Right here, this is where I'm going to have my elevator platform. And thinking about it, we might be able to put this one more block down. Eh, actually, let's leave it there. I don't want the grass poking through. We're gonna start our endeavors with three levels. And hopefully, if we build this correctly, we can always expand it to have more levels. But that's the amount of materials I have with me right now. To be completely fair, I would like to use these sorts of pipes in order to build the elevator. And I think we only need the round corners and the stray pipes. In order to do one single floor, we would need two bearings. One attached right here, for instance, with a pipe going all the way here. Another bearing and another pipe going all the way back. That would be one single level. And I estimated approximately 16 blocks should be enough head clearance for one level. But now, honestly, looking at this, I feel like we should put this one more floor down. We could even get rid of this floor completely. Hopefully, nothing is gonna break if I do that. Though, wait. No, 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 no. I can't do it. I already know it would break without this addition. Okay, let's do that on the other side as well. Now we can get rid of this floor and actually attach it one block further down. So right here, we can have our mechanism. The grass poking through at this point isn't really a bad thing. So let's bring this over and over, attach another corner piece, another bearing, corner piece and pipe, pipe, then another corner piece and we have done one single floor. As I said, I want to do three floors in the beginning and a total of six floors is going to be possible with that space. So the six floor mark is going to be our limit, but let me finish that quickly for the first three levels. There we go, that's another level done and the last one. Always with a bearing in the curves. Said and done, of course we're still gonna need a bearing right here in the last slot and this is where we are going to attach our floor. Had to get a little bit more wood but there we go, this is gonna be our elevator floor, this entire platform should be movable. For now to make things a bit clearer I'm gonna remove this still and we are just gonna focus on this block. So this is gonna represent our floor. As for the electronics, I would like to set this up right here. Uh, by the way, this wall here is gonna represent the elevator shaft, I guess, so you don't really see that in the end. But let's try to figure out the logic. We're gonna need a ton of logic gates. Are they facing the right way? No. There we go, that's what I wanna see. First things first, we need a way in order to figure out which floor we clicked on. So we're gonna need a whole bunch of buttons and depending on which button we clicked, it doesn't matter on which floor we are, it should go to that button's floor. So what I want to do is set up three gates for each of the levels. Right now I only have three levels. And by the way, that doesn't count the ground level. The ground level is just when no signal is active. In order to save an input signal with a button and just keep it on, we're going to need an RS NOR latch. And we can do this quite easily with two NOR gates and an AND gate. So each level is gonna have two NOR gates, like so, and one AND gate. NOR, NOR, AND, and all I have to do is hook it up like so, and back from the AND gate to the first NOR gate. If you do it right, the second NOR gate and the AND gate are going to be active for now. 
considering we want a button in the elevator but also on each individual level so we can call the elevator up we're going to need an or gate in order to activate that functionality so let's say calling the elevator is gonna be this or gate for each of the levels so if we activate this input no matter what button is activating this input we want to go to this level with the elevator okay now let's think about how we want to enter this thing we'll probably just have a door somewhere and I just see this staircase isn't very convenient. I think I want to go up at this point. So we have a little bit more space in front of the elevator. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, unfortunately, it is nighttime. I just fixed the staircase, but this is way more convenient. So we can click the buttons if we need to. Maybe let's set up the buttons. Let's see. I mean, at the entrance of each elevator, we only really need one in order to call the elevator in case it's not here yet. So that should have a convenient height. Maybe right there. Yeah, looks about right. Inside the elevator, the buttons are usually on the side. Maybe we can start building one side. Uh, the problem is I'm going to have to overlap here slightly. Is it going to be too narrow if we put this down one more block? No, actually, that's still convenient. Let's set up a panel approximately here. We need enough buttons for one uh, plus six floors. Hmm, I mean, we could have them next to each other, but since I cannot label the buttons properly, I want to do it like so. So seven buttons all the way up there. All right, that's going to be the end product. But as I said, for now, we're just going to need four for the zero floor and then one, two, three. Alrighty, I quickly waited for daytime so we can see this properly. We already set up the OR gates that are going to be responsible to enable each of the RS NOR latches. We're going to need three additional OR gates in order to shut each signal off. So let's also make sure this is all OR gates. And I believe in order to do that, we only have to send each signal to the NUR gates. Let's actually test this out. We're going to have two signals right here. One signal activating this, another one this. And then we're going to drag this over here and this one over there. So if we click this button, it's going to swap to this signal. And if we click this button, it's going back to the default stage. So that means our left OR gate is the enable button and the right OR gate is the disable button. Let's apply this to the rest. So you go right there and you go right here. Hello, this is Editing Nathan and here I made my first mistake. I should have hooked up the activation OR gate to the right NOR gate and I should have hooked up the deactivation OR gate to the left NOR gate and I did that wrong. Spoiler warning, it's gonna result in some issues. This is gonna be hard to fix in case I wire up something wrong. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. In retrospect, that is a pretty ironic moment. But it looks pretty clean, I would say. Now we can hook up the buttons. The first button right here is gonna lead us to the ground floor. That means we want to be at the stage we currently are with our pipes, which is no signal active. That means we need to disable all the signals with this button. So this button is going to go to all of these guys. And now we can actually do the same thing with this button, because all we want is the elevator to go down to the ground floor. So this button is going to do the same exact thing. Now, if we wanted less connections, we could use additional OR gates. Hmm. Actually, maybe it's worth it because there are going to be so many connections with these buttons. And who knows, maybe I want to wire up an automatic door and I don't want to deal with this mess. Ah, look at this, we can even afford two more gates and uh, I believe I should have some more glue. Beautiful. So three more gates representing each floor and we can attach as many buttons as we want to them. Now, of course, we're only doing that to make the circuitry more beautiful. I hope you still have the overview. So this OR gate is going to be representing the buttons. The second row is the ON switch and the third row is the OFF switch. Oh crap, we need an additional one for the bottom floor. And I had to miss that jump. <laughs> so this guy here at the bottom is gonna be the bottom switch. Let's hook these up. And what we wanted to do is shut off all the signals so the elevator is going to the ground floor. Next up, the first floor button is gonna go right here. This is the signal that activates the first floor. What we wanna do in this case is enable the first floor signal right here but we want to disable all the other signals. So the signal is going to activate level 1, but it's going to disable both the other levels. Hmm. If I think this a little bit further, what I wanted to do is have each signal activated individually so we know which level we need to be on. But what we could do is say, once we enable the second floor, then we also want the first floor light to be enabled. 
Yeah, I think this is a really good idea. So this is the second floor button that is going to go to this signal. What we want to do is enable the second floor, but we also want to enable the first floor signal. So both of these signals are going to be turned on, enabling a controller. Uh, hello again. Here we have my second major mistake. I forgot to disable the third row, the third floor. I only enabled second floor and first floor, forgot to disable the third one. Go on past Nathan, you idiot. Then last but not least, the third floor should go right there. It should enable the third floor, the second floor and the first floor all together. Okay, and that actually looks pretty clean for what it is. It's time to put this to the test with a controller. We're probably gonna need one controller for each level. Can I place these? Yeah, I wanna place it like so. Actually, with the display towards the outside. Yeah, looks a bit cooler. Let's see, we probably need to upgrade this at least one. Each controller needs to be capable... Ooh, hang on. The first controller... Yeah, we have a problem here, because the first bearing and the last bearing need a different angle than all the ones in the center. There are lots of things I haven't considered yet. Okay, I decided it's time to intervene at this point. I was rambling on for about 30 minutes, not figuring out what was going wrong because of the wrong connections I made. Fortunately enough, editing Nathan, well, that, that would be me right now, was able to fix everything and scrap the rest of the recording so we can continue from a place where I actually know what's happening. My first mistake was I actually missed one bearing for each of the intersections. So now each level consists of a bearing like so, with a snake like so, and then this is the last bearing still belonging to the first level mechanism. The reason we need to do that is because we need two bearings to form a 180 degree angle together, so both 90 degrees, and then this guy right here is going to be 180 degrees on its own. This is the only way to ensure the rest of the platform keeps straight, and of course if we want to stop at different levels and not just go to one specific level, we need to have the three bearings for each. This also means I had to upgrade each of the controllers and now it's actually time to hook them up. So this is going to be the first level. That means we want to hook up the first three bearings just like so. We're going to do the same thing for the second level. We need to hook up the next three bearings and then the same thing for the third controller. And this should hopefully straighten up my elevator. Beautiful. We already have our panel right here with our four buttons. 0, 1, 2 and 3. Down below here we have the space for two more levels, potentially I had to put the contraption back a little bit. So now it's time to hook up each of the buttons. We remember this middle row is the button control, so level 0 should go here, level 0 right there and so on and so forth. Level 1 goes right here. There we go, all of our buttons hooked up ready to go. The last thing we need to do is hook up the output signal to our controllers. That is actually pretty straightforward, just one block to the next. Okay, time to set up the bearings. If we look at this bearing, what we want this stick to do is turn 90 degrees to the green. So that's going to be our starting measurement. 90 degrees, the next thing is going to be minus 180 and it's always alternating between green and red. So that would be 90 red. Of course, these three angles negate each other, resulting in zero degrees for the top block. And if we have the controllers at the same speed, it's going to go up pretty much straight. Let's have a proper look at this. Click the button here. And we can see the elevator goes up straight and we have our first bearing piston arm expanded. We can then press this button in order to bring the elevator back. No problemo. Cool, let's do the same thing for all the other controllers. We can go with the same settings since it's the same orientation. 90 minus 180 plus 90. Beautiful. In theory, that means we should now be able to control this elevator. Okay, it does have a few more problems with me on top. No, actually, that's just my character that is struggling to stay there. But okay, that would be the third floor. This is actually pretty high, but it's not as high as I imagined. <laughs> and let's go all the way down to the first floor. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Of course, if you skip a bunch of floors, it's going faster because of all the pistons. And I say pistons because we technically made a piston there. Maybe to check this out in its full glory, I also want to look at it from the bottom. So I'm just going to hook up my OR gates there. Let's send it to the third floor and see how that does. Yeah, it, it does get a speed boost. <laughs> then we want to go down to the second floor, right there. We want to go down to the first floor. Ah, that is folding so nicely. I love it. Okay, we just need to build an elevator shaft so it doesn't look quite as ridiculous. 
And come all the way down. <laughs> yeah, that's why we need an elevator shaft to kind of guide this. Unfortunately, I'm a little bit out of material, so I think what I'm gonna do is cut down a bunch of trees so I can at least finish building the elevator itself and then maybe a bunch of rocks to get the shaft done. Unfortunately, I took my awesome crane arm apart in order to do some testing, but I hope this vessel is gonna do as well. Not 100% sure about that, but at least it looks capable enough to take apart the rocks. And then maybe I'm gonna do some fine tuning by hand. At least with this machinery, I'm not wasting any fuel either. Well, I have to be honest, it's actually doing a better job than I anticipated. Just have to be a little bit delicate with the controller-enabled acceleration. Oh yeah, uh, give me everything! I'm gonna be right back, guys. Time to refine my materials. In the near future, we're gonna build an awesome mining slash forestry machinery, but I was just busy doing other stuff, testing things here, building crazy useless contraptions such as gears and elevators. That's just where my mind goes in this game. Okay, I guess the next thing we want to do is take care of a bunch of trees and I'm just gonna do this very easily with a motor and a saw blade attached to it. Just gonna need one bearing, that should be fine. Let's see, maybe something that is remotely stable would be nice. With a bearing right there and the saw blade, I mean technically that, that should work, right? We just need to take a little bit of fuel with us, fill the engine, it can probably be at low power. And now I hope I can just drag this around and cut down the trees until I have a better machine. Let's actually test it out with this log. Can I bring this ashore? Uh, oh man, this is gonna take forever. Gonna attach a button, hook this up right there and there and let's see the magic happen. Magic! I guess testing this with the log in the water wasn't the best of ideas. Let's uh, go ahead and test it with this tree. Got my saw blade ready. Can I push you into the tree? Come on, do something. Yeah, yeah, come on. <laughs> I just wanna collect you. Okay, okay, we actually did it. Oh, anyways guys, I'm gonna be right back once I collected some materials. Okay, we are back and as you can see, I already started to theorize a little bit how I want to do this. Currently, we have a wooden cabin, so if I just pull this up a little bit, you can see what actually belongs to the elevator. And now we basically want to avoid stuff like that. Holy cow, come on, go down, there we go. And we're going to use a mixture of concrete. I crafted a bunch of concrete. I'm going to need to collect way more rocks in order to achieve that. But the basic idea here in the front is going to be a large stone pillar. I'm just gonna bring that up. Oh, I just see this piece of wood shouldn't be a uh, part of the elevator, of course. There we go, this should be right there. <laughs> Uh, okay, I guess we first really need to complete the railing there. You can do it. I believe in you. Okay, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. This is gonna be our door frame. And I think I would like this to be brick as well. This makes a little bit more sense to me. Brick right here, maybe with a little bit of concrete in the center to mix it up. And then of course this one would have to be wood again in order to make the frame, the door frame. And just like this, it's easy to use the elevator in order to finish things. Let's now see, actually, can we go down? Is this smooth? Yeah, pretty smooth. So just to make it clear, that would be our second floor right there. Let's continue with the third... No, hold on. The first floor, I'm always getting this confused. And the second floor and the third floor. And I guess I'm gonna have to grind a couple more stones in order to achieve that. But I'm gonna show you the results once I actually finished it. All right, I am back and we are done with the bare minimum. You can see where I actually ran out of materials. <laughs> These buttons are still gonna disappear and of course everything is gonna be made more beautiful. But we already have the functionality. We can go all the way up to the third floor just like that. And the wonky thing actually doesn't happen with the elevator. It's the character. <laughs> The only thing we're missing are the buttons to actually call the elevator from the different levels in case it's not actually already there. But let's go ahead and check out the second floor. Beautiful floor, I have to say. And then there is the first floor going down. Yes, working nicely, I would say. And just to show you that the elevator actually works quite nicely and smoothly. There we go. We can also bring it all the way down. No problem. The rails keep it in place. So give me the buttons, please. We want to place these in their respective locations. 
So one button goes right there. And we need to be able to hook this up. Uh, let me think. That will be right there. Hopefully we can reach the further spots. Oh, I can barely... S oh no, I can't reach it. So I have to go down. In, uh, let me see. Okay, that works. You go right there. So there's one more to do. Oh yeah, there I felt a little bit. So here we go. This should be the last button. Can I actually... Oh, I can use the buttons while doing that. Oh, that's nice. So I don't have to kill myself. You're going right there. And with that, we should have hooked up everything. And this is hopefully fail-proof. Of course, right now it's not extremely secure. It might also be a little bit fast for the physics. Let me check this out one more time. Yeah, I'm actually getting ragdoll. <laughs> I mean, I do like fast elevators, but considering we might even add more levels, we might want to put this down to a slower speed. Let's try this one and see what it does with us. Be kind. Okay, okay. Looks like that doesn't hurt us for the time being. By the way, on the top floor, I also am going to make my first entrance into the tree. Ugh, that's gonna be amazing. But we're gonna do even more stuff on the top. If this world doesn't break, this could be a magnificent base. But yeah, I guess with that out of the way, we're going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Have a great time and see you soon. Bye-bye.